This is a 1991 Chevy S10 with a 4.3 V6 that has a bit of an issue that I'm helping a friend out with here. And the issue is, is that he's been experiencing a noise concern from the right rear wheel. And um, we pulled off the drone and found out that the brake shoes are pretty badly worn, especially on a trailing edge right here where you've only got what looks to be about 16th of an inch or so, that's almost ready to flake off. And in this case, we got lucky. The drum will usually have a wear ridge in here, and you can sort of see that right there where the drums were not, or the shoes were not making contact with the drum and not wearing out. And here's a contact surface, so you can kind of see the difference in the height. But this drum actually did come off without a whole lot of effort. And I'm very suspicious that these are the original brake shoes for this truck because of the sticker you see right there, as well as the retainers for the drums that they have on here during assembly when they flip the frame over to do the body drop, keeps the drums from sliding off. So what we're gonna do today is um, replace the brake shoes on this truck. We've got already got the complete brake shoes set. We're going to clean everything out in here. This is the side that had the issue. And one of the things you want to look for upon inspection is do you have any wetness or moisture around the uh, seals here for the uh, wheel cylinder? And these are completely dry, which is good. And you also, if you can, I don't know if you guys can see the wheel bearing, the axle bearing right here. You can kind of see the silver area of the shaft. You want to check for any kind of evidence of gear oil leakage right around there to make sure that your axle seals are in good shape. And they are. And you can see under there we've got the, uh, we haven't touched the uh, driver's side. And that's a good trick to do because we're going to get this apart and if we, ca if, in case we forget how the springs are oriented, we'll be able to go to the other side and basically copy that from the other side. So the first thing we got to do, and it might be a little bit tricky, is to get all these springs out of here. Usually I like to use a pair of uh, needle nose vice grip pliers. We'll back these retainers off. You push these in, turn 90 degrees, and they should come right off. And we'll get the parking brake, the uh, brake shoes out of here. And um, another clue that um, was told to me is that not only did this start making the noise, but the parking brake has a lot of travel in it. You've got to go all the way to the floor for the parking brake. And even when you do engage the parking brake, it doesn't have a lot of holding force. So that tells me that the brake shoes are worn, and we've definitely proven that. And I think these are the original brake shoes. So uh, let me get some tools, and I'll be back, and we'll get these springs off of here. So now we have everything disassembled. I've got a little light here to... Uh, make things a little bit easier to see. Here's your wheel cylinder and you can kind of test here for freedom of movement. You can push these in so we know these things aren't bound up and we know that they're not leaking as well. And even though we do have the driver's side wheel still on to use as a point of reference, what I like doing once I get all the springs disassembled is I like laying all the springs out in a general way of how they went on to the uh, brake shoes themselves. Now believe it or not, I've never actually worked on a GM car before or the, the GM, the brakes on a GM car before and what's a little bit different here is the spring on the uh, parking brake mechanism kind of uh, threw me for a loop there to try to get this extra piece off of the uh, eyelet here and the way to do that was is I just wedged a screwdriver between that and the parking brake, the brake shoe, and uh, relieve some of that tension, and I was able to get this uh, spring off of here. This is the star wheel adjuster, and you can see just how far out that really is. That really should be pointed back toward this direction, so those shoes are pretty badly worn. We're going to take this and clean it all off, put some lithium grease on there, make sure it's well lubricated. This star wheel has to be able to rotate um, in order to uh, self-adjust the, the shoes when you back the truck up. And over here is the uh, worst old shoe. 
the original shoes when the truck was made in 1991, almost down to bare metal. And these are the riveted shoes. You've got two different kinds of shoes. You've got riveted and bonded. Riveted is a little bit stronger than the bonded shoes. And we have the replacement shoes over here. And you can see how much thicker the material is on here. And they're also riveted as well too. So what's going to happen now is that um, after the cat helps us out, I'm going to blow everything out with compressed air, make sure all this is clean, use some brake cleaner, make sure all this is moving even freer than it is now, clean off all the uh, springs and a star wheel adjuster and everything, and then we'll go on with the new shoes. Okay, after a little bit of trouble, the new shoes are on. We were referencing the other side there that was untouched so we can get this side all straightened up. And the spring that goes to the uh, rear shoe goes behind, goes on this little eyelet here, and the spring that goes on the front shoe goes in the front of this support bracket. And one thing that I found out uh, the hard way is uh, that the shoe thicknesses are different between front and rear. So I initially had both of the thin shoes on this side and then the thick shoes on the other side, making it impossible to get the drum on on that side. And taking a clue from the old shoes, the thin shoe was, on, was toward the rear, and that was the same thing on the other side. So I reasoned that the thinner shoe on the rear should have the thicker shoe there. It wears faster, so we have the sh thicker shoe on this side now. And the same thing over on the other side, so we can go ahead and uh, put the, the drums back on. We've got no leaks. We, we can, I've adjusted the star wheel as much as I can, so there's just ever so slightly amount of friction there, which is just what you want. This will adjust automatically as the car backs up several times, but just doing it by hand, holding this lever out and then doing that by hand will speed the process up a little bit and uh, make the initial application of the brakes a lot safer. So that's pretty much how you do the drum brakes on a 91 S10 and probably other vehicles. One other point that you want to keep in mind is this parking brake lever right here that has the spring on here. Make sure that's centered up between these two places here on the shoes as well too. Sometimes that wants to drop down and that'll keep your shoes spread apart. That's pretty typical of uh, most drum brake systems. But what's unusual on these drum brakes compared to the ones I've worked on is this arrangement here with the um, adjusting star wheel lever here. You've got this solid piece that goes around the eyelet and then the spring, instead of going around the eyelet, goes on the secondary lever right here, making it a little tricky. This has a washer back here that is, has a slight interference fit to the back of the shoe. So what you want to do is uh, take a socket like this and a hammer and just tap that in place. Clean it up a little bit with a wire brush. Put some uh, lithium grease on there and just tap that in around all sides. Make sure that's even. Do that before you put the shoe in. Make sure this is uh, able to move like that and that this doesn't pop out and then you can go ahead and uh, assemble everything together. So hopefully that little tidbit will help you guys out when you do the brakes on your 91 Chevy S10 and uh, just keep in mind the main thing is is your shoes are going to be the shoe thickness is going to be different and uh, looks like the thicker shoe should go on the rear on both sides.